Hello, Vanessa here from the Pigeon Letters Design Team back again with another tutorial. Today we are going to be making a very super simple holiday card. So we're going to make some jingle bells using one color and a super simple design that you can put on a card and send out to your family and friends. So we're going to start with uh, making two circles. I use a circle maker because my ability to hand draw circles are uh, severely limited. So we are going to use this circle maker and make two bells or two circles. <laughs> In the middle of each circle, we are going to draw, uh, what is this, like a rectangle shape? circular rectangle rounded out at the edges and we're just going to cut that circle in half and that is going to be the middle of the jingle bell so make sure that you do this for both circles they don't have to be perfect they don't have to be super straight uh the the more imperfection it has the more character it gives so just keep that in mind on the top of each circle we're going to make like a little hook to hang the string by so we're going to do that at the top of both of these circles and then we are going to either one freehand or two use a ruler i prefer to use a ruler because just as i can't draw a circle i cannot draw a straight line so i am going to use a ruler to do a straight line from the hook on the top of each circle to the very very top of my postcard or my paper you can use uh, any watercolor paper that you have. Once that is done, we're going to make the little openings on the bottom of all of the jingle bells that you see. So to start this, we are going to make an upside down heart. Feel free to make it anywhere on your um, circle because we're presuming that these circles turn and you know bump into each other so they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical or in the middle. So after you draw your little upside down heart, you draw a little curved line to meet at the bottom of your circle and you do this twice on each circle. And you'll see after you have completed the step that you have your cute little jingle bell. Now that's it for the sketching part. This is all you have to do, super simple. Now we're going to grab our monoline pen. I'm using the um, Pigeon Letters Monoline Studio Size 3. It gives it a nice thick line and not super thin. Again, I'm going to use my ruler to go over my line, um, but everything that you penciled in, go over it with your monoline. Now, what I love about the Pigeon Letters Monoline Studio Pen is that they are waterproof. So we are going to watercolor right on top of them. If you do not have a waterproof black monoline pen, leave this part until the very end because we don't want your pen smudging all over the paper. So do a test first on a scrap piece of paper to make sure that your pen is waterproof. And these are. So while we're tracing over our sketch, let me tell you a little bit about this paper. This is, the paper that I'm using is specifically a watercolor postcard. So it is watercolor paper cut to a four by five and a half. It already has like the beveled edges and all of that built in. I purchased a tin on clearance a really long time ago. But if you do not have a watercolor postcard or um, watercolor cards, which again, they sell the watercolor cards with envelopes, which are super, super convenient, you can make your own um, and just cut it to four by five and a half. You can bevel, bevel the edges. You can leave them straight however you want. But these come in super, super handy, especially around the holidays. You can, you know, make your design on them, put a little happy holidays in the back and send it off. So yeah, this is, these are the size of these postcards and you can purchase them in a, in a tin, in a pack of 20, 25. You can also purchase, um, watercolor greening cards where you can, um, paint your own design on them and they're blank on the inside.
Once I am done with my um, monoline over my sketch, it doesn't take very long to dry, about less than a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take a size 16 brush and I am just going to apply water over the entire thing. We're gonna do it very haphazardly. Uh, there's like, you know, there's no structure to this. And I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray. I don't want it to be too dark, just, just a little touch of it. And I'm going to go over that water and let it spread out and let it do its own thing. Again, we're not, uh, there's no structure to it. We're just gonna go ahead in there and, and just slap it on. And then I am going to do a little bit of splatter over the top. And this is going to be the background for the card. You're going to let this dry completely before moving on to the next step. Once this has completely dried, we are going to move on to painting the jingle bells. So I'm going to be using the very same color, Payne's Gray, and I am switching to a smaller brush. This one is a size six. And you're going to notice that the darkest color, the darkest shade of this Payne's Gray is going to be added to the left side of the painting. So the light source is going to be hitting the bells from the right. So put the highest concentration of color on the left side, and then with a wet, clean brush, drag that color along to the other side. So we're taking it one half of the bell at a time, and you'll notice here that all I am doing is grabbing a paper towel, and I'm just going in with plain water and I am dragging some of that color to the other side uh, so that it could be a nice light, really light gray on the other side. We want to keep the other side pretty light. Even if you leave a couple of like white splotches here and there, that's perfect. We want this to be artistic. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, shaded to perfection. Um, we are just doing some really light shading. Just keep in mind that you want to have one side really dark and then the other side a little bit lighter. Now, after we do the top, we are going to do the same thing to the bottom of the same jingle bell. And again, um, you'll see here that I'm just darkening up a little bit because I dragged, I dragged or drug, I dragged <laughs> too much color to the other side. So I'm adding in a little bit more of the Payne's Gray to the left side um, before moving on to the bottom. Now remember that little ring that we put around the jingle bell in the beginning? We're going to leave that plain white. So we're not going to touch that. You're going to leave that white. So just start under it. And when you are uh, watercoloring, just make sure not to drag any paint in there. If a little bit goes in there, again, not a huge deal, but for the most part, you wanna leave that as white as possible. And now we are going to repeat that same process for the jingle bell at the bottom. And again, if you have more than two jingle bells or you, you just have one, you have three, you have four, just repeat the same process for all of them. And remember to have your light source from one direction. You don't want the top jingle bell to have the light source in the right and then the bottom one to have the light source on the left. You wanna make sure that they're all coming from the same direction and make sure that you leave that area a little bit lighter than the rest. Um, also, one thing that I noticed that I did actually forget was to paint the little hook on the top. So make sure that you don't forget that. Although mine is uh, so small that you can hardly see it, but I will go over it uh, later on with the um, black model line pen. So make sure that you do that at the end. While both bells are still wet, 
grab some white. It can be white watercolor, white gouache. I have um, this white ink called Opaque Opaque White. And I'm going to further add some highlights to, to both bells. Now, I'm not going to make it super glaring. That's why I'm doing it while it's wet. I'm just going to lighten it just a bit by adding a little bit of white onto the right side of the bell. Um, and I'm just kind of going to spread it in. So it's not going to be like super glaring white. It's just going to be a little bit lighter. Um, if you find that your um, Payne's Gray got a little away from you, this helps bring some of that white back in there. If you have enough white, then you don't need to do this step. Make sure that your bells are completely dry before moving on to the next step. Now to finish this off, we are going to grab a nice amount of white on a wet brush and we are going to strategically splatter some of that over the bells and over the back, uh, the background. So that's what we're doing now. As you'll see, I'm adding a little bit more to the top of each bell than to the bottom and I'm making sure to add some into the background. And with that, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.